So we haven't talked much about Transformers Prime besides a slight mention about how the legacy figures in Wave 1 kind of shafted Prime fans. And the thing is, I'm kind of still right. I mean, Bulkhead was a great figure, but he was still a little bit too G1. And RC was just... No. And Knockout was okay too, but he looked a little bit too much like his IDW counterpart. So you can imagine I was a little bit skeptical when they announced Legacy's third outing would have another Prime character getting a toy. And was a stylized one at that. This would be Thundertron, a fan favorite from the Transformers Prime books and one of the high points from the R.I.D. Prime toy line. Which I know isn't a very high bar to reach considering we went from first edition, which had Bulkhead and Prime, to R.I.D. which had Bulkhead and Prime. God, this Prime sucks. But anyway, here's Thundertron, who stayed surprisingly faithful to his original toy. And you know, initially I didn't really care for it. I've owned this toy for about three weeks, and I just couldn't make heads or tails as to why I didn't like this mode. I thought it was something that they did wrong, or maybe they had favored the robot mode instead of the lion mode, but then I realized I just transformed it wrong. I am so dumb! Yeah, I don't really look at instructions anymore because, well, half the time they don't really help anything. So I just rely on what we call basic instinct. So I eventually figured it out. And now that I don't have it transformed wrong, I really, really like how this lion mode looks. I really like how this looks and it's a vast upgrade over the original in my opinion. I vastly prefer the color choice of the darker blue and gold. And one thing they've admitted that I really like is no translucent plastic. It was bad enough that these toys had slash budgets, but man, these translucent plastic pieces just ruin the Voyagers every time. Name a bigger downgrade. I'll wait. I hear the inspiration behind the changes to his beast mode was Zoids, and honestly, now that I look at it, I'm really seeing it. Specifically, the Liger Zero variety. I also really like how there's panels reflecting the lion's mane and fur, which kind of falls apart when we get to robot mode. Well, the logic of it anyway. I also really enjoy how machine-like the back paws are. I just wish the front paws matched them a little better. And for the uninitiated who noticed the logo, he's not an Autobot or a Decepticon. He's what they call a Star Seeker, which you might remember from the Transformers Prime novels, the Legends comic, or the BotCon 2014 set. In short, he's a space pirate. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. David, David, no, we can't say pirate on the YouTube platform. Our, our, but anyway, logo, star seeker, leader, yeah, you get it. He also has a bunch of scratches and slashes inside his body, which is a very cool detail to add into a swashbuckling warrior. This is the right way to do battle damage. I hope you're listening, Siege. As for features, you can't really roll him because, well, beast mode, but he can articulate pretty well. Surprisingly, a lot more than your average beast former, which is very much appreciated. Also, you can remove his back foot, which means, yes, you can have a lion that's been pegged. David, robot mode. The transformation is very quick and simple, but it's also very unique in some places, especially with how the shoulders form from the lion paws, as well as how flush the lion head goes into the chest. I really like that. In robot mode, he's a very stoic looking figure. His white color makes him look very aged, and I think that's what they were going for with it. That becomes more apparent when we get to the head. Remember how I said the panels were symbolizing the hair and mane on the lion mode? Well, that makes sense until we get to robot mode and look at his head and say, he's got a freaking metal beard. That breaks continuity about as much as the Align continuity itself. You cannot tell me that these are the same people. The head is not a deal breaker though. It's very well sculpted and it looks great. The only problem is it's not actually accurate. I'm not actually sure where this one came from either. This one reminds me a lot of a Viking, while the other one reminds me of a squid for some reason. And I think it's whatever's on his head, to be honest. But whatever, I'm rolling with it. He's got a very heroic Crusader vibe just with how he's proportioned as well as his colors, which is kind of ironic considering he's an antagonistic character. But that wouldn't be the first time they did that. <laughs> Also, they filled in almost all of his gaps besides the one in his forearms and his back of his legs, which I get why those have to be there. But this is a very, very solid figure. And also because of how his feet are designed, he's very stable. One thing I absolutely can't stand on this figure, though, are these stupid Wolverine claws that they gave him because instead of molding them into his hands so they would turn, no, they molded it into his forearms so he interferes with his wrist articulation. And at that point, they might as well have just taken the wrists away. I mean, they did it all the time in freaking Thrilling 30. They took Roadbuster's wrists away and Night Beats. By the way, fuck 
that night, Pete. Hi, my name's Eric Blackman. I'm a lying f**k. Who, who are you yelling at? We're the only two people in the f**king house. Eric's a liar. Now, he's got two features going on here, but unfortunately, I can only demonstrate one because, well, I have misplaced his sword. God, how many legacy accessories have I lost so far? Haha, <laughs> <laughs> very funny, Dave. Now, get back in the closet. So you can plug the sword into his hand, as you can see from this reference image, and you can also take his foot off and plug it into the sword as well to make some kind of guard, which personally I think that looks stupid, but whatever. Which means that opens him up again to a peg leg, and that makes way more sense in his robot mode than it did in lion mode, to be honest. Articulation on Thundertron is actually pretty good. Uh, he's got a ball jointed head, which is standard for this line for the most part. Uh, these shoulder pads can like wiggle a little bit up, down, back and forward because of the joint from transformation, so that's nice. Uh, the arms can go backwards and forwards. They can't go all the way around because, well, actually they kind of can uh, if you get the shoulder pads out of the way. Um, he's got a double jointed elbow that can go in above 90 degrees, about 45 degrees actually. Uh, his wrists, like I said, they've been very hindered by these Wolverine claws right here, which pisses me off to no end. <laughs> um, he's got no, or no, he's got a waist, um, a very hindered waist from all the kibble, but eh, what are you going to do? Uh, it's not too bad. Uh, he's got uh, very good hips that are universal. They go all the way out and you can get good forward movement, good backward movement. Uh, his knees are double jointed as well. Well, no, the knees aren't double jointed, but they are very, very, very good knees. Uh, and then the ankles can move a little bit. Um, and then you can go forward back. And of course you can change that if you want to. I don't know why you would do that, but hey, he's not too bad. Um, for a very kibble restricted or a very kibble loaded figure, I should say, with a lot of paneling and whatnot, he's actually not too terribly bad. So I can't complain too much. Overall, Thundertron's all right. He's not my favorite Legacy Voyager because, let's face it, the Legacy Voyagers have had some real bangers, but he still has some serious upsides that let him stand out. Plus, he's the first Prime figure to be done really any justice. I mean, Bulkhead, I love you, but you've got nothing. I really hope that soon we get an Alpha Trizer out of this guy. Maybe also a Go Prime, but till then, we're getting a more pirate-like Thundertron with a bunch of extra stuff like a Rat Bat that turns into a flag. Okay. And that's coming in a Star Seekers capsule that'll be available at Walmart. They even gave him the accurate head and a freaking hook. What the hell? I keel haul the jib and refasten the falafels. We sail for smoother seas, men. So if you don't have this guy and can't find him, you'll have another shot at getting him very, very soon. With that being said, keep growing your collections. Treebot out. And I wish honky tonks didn't have no clothes in town. And I wish grandpa's never died.